Hello, everyone. It's so nice to meet you here online. Today, my topic is Get to Know Xi'an, Contemporary Xi'an, and Ancient Xi'an. Two questions for you. Question one, what is Xi'an? Question two, what does Xi'an mean in Chinese? Well, Xi'an is a city in China. Xi means west. An means safe. Xi'an, safe city in the west. The red spot is Xi'an, red part Shanxi province, PRC. Xi'an is a city located in Shanxi province, PRC. Shanxi province is a province of north central China. Xi'an is its capital. PRC is the abbreviation of People's Republic of China. People's Republic of China is the official name of contemporary China. The lecture will cover four parts. A little information about PRC. Brief introduction to Shanxi province. Profile of contemporary Xi'an. Xi'an in ancient times. Uh, PRC in Chinese history. This red arrow stands for PRC. Before PRC, China has a long history of over 5,000 years, started from the prehistoric age, and then the first dynasty, Xia dynasty, Shang dynasty, Zhou dynasty, Qin dynasty, Han dynasty, Northern and Southern dynasty, Sui dynasty, Tang dynasty, Song dynasty, Yuan dynasty, Ming dynasty, Qing dynasty, the last dynasty, and then a short period of People's Republic, and then People's Republic of China, PRC. Location of PRC. In Eastern Hemisphere, in Northern Hemisphere, in Eastern Asia, along the west coast of the Pacific Ocean. Neighbors of PRC, 14 neighbors. Northern Korea, Russia, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam. Six sea neighbors. South Korea, Japan, Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia. PRC as a country and a nation. Founding father Mao Zedong. National Day, October 1st. Capital, Beijing. Size, around 9,630,000 square kilometers. Population, 1.4 billion. National symbol, Tiananmen. Official language, Mandarin. 34 administrative divisions. 23 provinces. 5 autonom autonomous regions. 4 municipalities. Two special administrative regions, Hong Kong and Macau. His name is Mao Zedong. PRC was proclaimed founded by Mao Zedong on October 1st, 1949 on Tiananmen Gate Tower, Beijing, China. Mao Zedong was the founding father of the new China, called Chairman Mao by Chinese people. To commemorate Chairman Mao, his huge picture is hung on Tiananmen Gate Tower. To the south of the Tiananmen Square is the Memorial Hall of Chairman Mao. This is the Tiananmen Square. It is the largest city square in the world. So this is Tiananmen Gate Tower. 
It is also the entrance to the imperial palace of Ming and Qing dynasty, the Forbidden City. This is the Great Hall of the People, and this is the monument to the people's hero. To the south uh, of the monument is the Memorial Hall for Chairman Mao. Because Tiananmen is a place where the inauguration of PRC was held. It is widely used as a national symbol of China. The five-star red flag, the color red, symbolizes the spirit of revolution. The five stars signify the unity of PRC under the leadership of the Communist Party. So it shows Tiananmen under the light of five stars and framed with ears of gray and cogwheel. Tiananmen is a place where the inauguration of PRC was held. And the cogwheel and the ears of gray represent workers and farmers respectively. It clearly indicates that PRC is a socialist state led by the working class and based on the alliance of industrial and agricultural workers. About the people of PRC, 1.4 billion Chinese people live mainly around the coastal areas and industrialized zones of central China. PRC is home to 56 ethnic peoples, with the Han people accounted for 92% of total population, while the other 55 ethnic groups are known as minorities. More than 100 languages are spoken in PRC. The modern standard language of China is Mandarin, known as Putonghua. All of the Chinese dialects share a common written form that serves as a unifying bond among the Han Chinese. Chinese characters. There are two types of Chinese characters, traditional one and a simplified one. Long, long, both of them means dragon. The traditional characters are passed down from ancient China, still popular in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau today, rather in mainland China. Xi Jinping is a present chairman. Man, chairman. He was born in Fuping, Guangzhou, Shanxi province. The persimmons in Fuping is famous in China. Location of Shanxi province, named Shan or Qin for short. Shanxi is located along the middle reaches of the Yellow River in the eastern part of northwest China. It covers an area of 205,600 square kilometers. Land features of Shanxi. It has a varied terrain. It is long and narrow from north to south, higher in the northwest part and lower in the southeastern region. The province includes four natural regions, the northern Shanxi Plateau, the Guanzhong Plain, the Qinlin Mountains, and the Hanjiang Valley. Three parts of Shanxi province, northern Shanxi, central Shanxi, and southern Shanxi. The three parts of Shanxi differ greatly in geographical, climatic, historical, and cultural backgrounds, and so forth. They are very different. Northern Shanxi, Lois Plateau, Central Shanxi, Guangzhou Plain, Southern Shanxi, Hanjiang Valley. Qinlin Mountains, 
a major east-west mountain range situated in the south of Shanxi province. Like a large tall windshield, Qinling blocks the cold air that goes south in winter, um, but also blocks the warm and humid air coming from the south in the summer. It also hinders the movement of people living, the, living on the northern and southern sides of the ridge, causing people's lifestyles and customers in the north and south to differ. It is a natural boundary between China's north and south. So Qinling Mountains, North China, South China. Four rare animals in Qinling Mountains. Giant panda, golden monkey, taking, crested uh, ibis. So the takings here are believed to be the most handsome takings in China. Guanzhong, also central Shanxi. This is Guanzhong Plain, covers an area of 34,000 square meters, 300 to 800 meters above sea level. About Guanzhong Plain, we need to know two important rivers, the Weihe River and the Yellow River. Weihe River is the biggest tributary of the Yellow River. Weihe River Plain or Guanzhong Plain. The Weihe River runs through it. It is an alluvian plain. It is vast and flat, rich in soil. The Yellow River the second biggest river in China, and the Yangtze River is the longest in southern China. The water is yellow, then the name Yellow River. The Yellow River is one of the cradles of Chinese civilization. Where is Shanxi? Where is Xi'an? Xi'an, in the center of China, on Guanzhong Plain. Xi'an consists of two parts, part of Guanzhong Plain, part of Qinling mountainous area. Qinling mountains in the south and Guanzhong Plain in the north. The mountainous area of Xi'an is called the back garden of Xi'an, both in ancient times and today. Here is a sea of clouds, amazing peaks, forests, waterfalls, springs, and beautiful scenery. It is a good place for the local people to go hiking on weekends and holidays. The plain area of Xi'an, the rural area, the urban area. Xi'an has a lot of rivers and wetlands. Most of the river water comes from the Qinling Mountain. There are eight rivers running around Xi'an. They are Bahe River and Changhe River to the east. Yuhe and Haohe to the south, Laohe and Fenghe to the west, Weihe and Jinghe to the north. This is a friendly habitat for Xi'anese. The local farmers grow wheat and corns and all kinds of fruits. Among all the fruits, pomegranate is the most famous one. The local people like eating all kinds of noodles. Spicy and sour noodles, diamond noodles, 
with the belt noodles and so on. The cold noodles is the most famous one. So this kind of noodles is also very famous in Xi'an. It has a funny name, biang biang mian. It is yummy, and the Chinese character biang is the most difficult Chinese character. Shredded pancakes in mutton or beef soup is a very famous Muslim food. When you go to a restaurant, you have to break the pancakes into small pieces, and then the cook cook it for you. Chinese hamburgers is also famous in Xi'an. Pork hamburger, beef hamburger, mutton hamburger are all available here. Dumpling banquet is the fanciest local delicacy. Different shapes of dumplings with different feedings. Walnuts inside, pumpkin inside, shrimps inside. Fish meat dumplings, duck meat dumplings, rabbit meat dumplings, frog meat, dump, frog meat dumplings, pork. Profile of contemporary Xi'an. It is the capital city of Shanxi province. It is a political, economic, and cultural center of northwest China. It has been identified as one of the nine national central cities to be built into an international metropolis. Modern look of Xi'an, modern buildings of Xi'an, modern parks of Xi'an, modern streets of Xi'an. Xi'an ranks number four as one of the educational centers in China, next to Beijing, Shanghai, and Wuhan, boasting more than 60 institutions of higher learning. The most famous ones are Northwest University, Jiao Tong University, and so on. It is also an important base of scientific research in China. There are more than 500 research institutes specialized in a variety of fields. It used to be the cultural and educational center of China in an ancient times. Early in 200 BC, Taixue Institution of Higher Learning took shape in Chang'an with about 1,000 Confucian scholars from all parts of the country and created the imperial examination system here in Sui Dynasty. So we can say the imperial examinations in old China originated from Xi'an. Xi'an is an important transportation hub. It provides a link of communication between southwest, northwest, and eastern east China. Size, 10,000 square kilometers. Population, 10 million. Climate, monsoon climate of medium latitudes. Average temperature, uh, 13 degrees Celsius. Annual precipitation is 600 millimeters. Tourism play an important role in the growth of local economy. Industries, automobile manufacture, aircraft manufacture, and electronic. Administrative divisions, 11 districts and two counties. A city tree is pagoda trees. City flower, pomegranate flowers. Local dialect, Xi'an dialect, Liao Zalie, very good. Klimata, hurry up. Bi Lie, I'm done, I'm dead. Zashi, pretend to be cool. 
and so on. If you like a challenge, you can learn some Xi'an dialect with me. Read after me. Liao Zali. Excellent. Nga di shen ya. I'm oh my god. Klimata. Hurry up. Za shi. Pretend to be cool. Bi I'm dead. Ada. Where? Jita. Here. Uda. There. Di Eat. Pian. Chat. Sima Erlung. Slow in mind. Li Yuan. Get away from here. Sui Song. Little child. Xi'an local opera is Qingqiang Opera. It is a high pitched local opera dates all the way back to the Qin Dynasty. It is a forefather of all styles of Chinese opera. Xi'an in ancient times, the names of Xi'an in different dynasties. Feng Hao in Zhou Dynasty, Chang'an in Han Dynasty, Da Xin in Sui Dynasty, Chang'an in Tang Dynasty, Feng Yuan in Yuan Dynasty, Xi'an in Ming Dynasty. The name of Xi'an started from 1369. The titles of Xi'an. It is one of the four famous ancient cities in China, ranking number one. It is one of the four world famous ancient cities, ranking number four. Rome, Istanbul, Athens, and Xi'an. Xi'an is famous for its long and glorious history. It has a 7,000 years of civilization, 3,100 years history of being a city, 1,100 years history as a capital city of China, cultural birthplace of Chinese civilization, the starting point of the Silk Road, plenty of famous historic sites in Xi'an. The Banpo village remains, terracotta warriors and horses, the Hot Spring Palace, the Big Wild Goose Pagoda, the Ming Dynasty City Wall, the Bell Tower, the Stone Tablets Museum, and so on. There are so many historic sites in Xi'an that we need at least two weeks to finish visiting the important ones. Prehistory in Xi'an, six to seven thousand years ago, by the riverside of Chang'e, there lived a group of Banpo people. They were the first group of Xi'an dwellers. They were fishermen, hunters, and fruit collectors. They mysteriously worshipped fish. They suffered from disease, wild animals, and the attacks from the other tribes. Children died at a very young age. The average lifespan of adults was from 30 to 40. So today we can go to visit a museum, Banpo Museum, to see the Banpo village remains. The museum displays a typical Neolithic matriarchal community from around six to 7,000 years ago. It was built on the site of the Banpo village ruins with the first on-site prehistoric museum in China. It introduces us to the painted pottery culture, the largest site of its kind along the Yellow River Valley. The site covers a large area of five to six hectares and is surrounded by a man-made moat protecting the village from enemy attacks, wild animals, and floods. According to the archaeological survey, the village is divided into three sections, the living section, and the buried section, and the 
pottery making section. Six to seven thousand years ago, the Banpo village should look, look like this. The mold, the living area, uh, pottery making area, and the berry area. But today, when you are inside the museum, you will see no buildings there. You will only see the foundations of the building and the artifacts unearthed there. So what are these for? They are berry jars for children. When the children died, their parents put the dead body in a jar and then put the jar next to their house. Uh, instead of burying them in the public graveyard because the parents want to take care of their kids even after they died. The basins with the human faced fish design are the most famous artifacts here. The tape-bottomed bottles were used to fetch water from the river the ancient steamer to cook food. The berry pits for adults in the public graveyard. From the village, archaeologists have discovered nearly 10,000 production tools or daily utensils, 45 houses, two pigsties, 200 cellars, 174 berry pits and for adults and 73 berry jars for children. The discovery of so many artifacts is indeed unprecedented. Xi'an in different dynasties. There are 13 dynasties which made Xi'an as a capital. Among them, the most famous four are Western Zhou Dynasty, Qin Dynasty, Western Han Dynasty, and Tang Dynasty. So the sites of ancient Xi'an in different dynasties, the purple ones, Feng and Hao of the Western Zhou Dynasty, the green one, Xianyang City of the Qin Dynasty, the blue one, Chang'an City of the Han Dynasty, the orange one, Chang'an City of the Tang Dynasty, the pink one, the Xi'an City of the Ming and the Qing Dynasty. Zhou Dynasty was the first dynasty which made Xi'an as the capital city of China. 3,000 years ago, a group of Zhou clan people moved to the Weihe River plain to become part of Xi'an citizen from present Gansu province. Advanced farming techniques enabled Zhou clan grow strong and overthrow the ruling of the Shang dynasty in the 11th century BC. It established its twin cities in Feng and Hao, which were separated by Fenghe River, marking the emergence of the ancient city of Xi'an. Two famous places in Xi'an related to the Western Zhou Dynasty is Shanxi History Museum and the Lishan Mountain. And why? Let's see. People in Zhou Dynasty are keen on making bronze wells. China's bronze culture reached its peak during the Western Zhou Dynasty. The number of bronze vessels unearthed in Shanxi has reached over 3,000, and two-thirds of them are now collected in Shanxi History Museum. That's the reason we need to visit Shanxi History Museum. They are ritual and musical instruments, daily utensils, production implements, and weapons as well. Bronze tripods, a cooking utensil of ancient times for stewing meat, were symbol of privileged identity. They were only possessed by slave owners and aristocrats, and mainly used on sacrificial occasions or at banquets. 
They were elaborately shaped, decorated with various patterns, and inscribed with Chinese characters, recording what happened every day, such as wars, sacrifices, etc. Bronze chime bells, an ancient Chinese musical instrument. They are a set of bells of different sizes and scales arranged in order and tied to the supporter. The musician taps the small bells with wooden or metal hammer and strikes the big ones with wooden or metal bars. Both classical and modern music can be played with the chime bells. Western Zhou Dynasty Beacon Tower on top of Li Shan Mountain. So this is Li Shan Mountain, one part of Qinling Mountain in the east of Xi'an. Located on the top of Li Shan Mountain, the remains of the Beacon Tower of the Zhou, uh, Western Zhou Dynasty is easily identified. The Beacon Tower. The Beacon Tower was built to give alarm of border attacks in ancient times. Once the enemy came, the fire and the smoke signal from the Beacon Tower would be sent. The smoke went straight up to the sky, and people could see it from a distance. A famous say, Chinese saying, a single smile costs a thousand pieces of gold, and the sovereign rulers are fooled by the beacon fire. It's related to the fall of the Western Zhou Dynasty in 771 BC. He is King Yu of the Western, Han, uh, Western Zhou Dynasty. He had a palace built at the foot of Li Shan Mountain and a beacon tower on the top of Li Shan Mountain. He had a favorite concubine named Bao Si. She was very pretty, but always put a long face. The king spared no effort to make her smile, but in vain. So he gave order, anyone who can make my lady smile will get a thousand pieces of gold as reward. Then one day, a minister suggested that the beacon fire be laid to make fun of other ducal states to make Bao Si smile. Sure enough, it worked very well. At the sight of the signal, the soldiers of other ducal states hurried to the foot of Li Shan Mountain. They were wet through with sweat and out of breath, but only found themselves deceived and dismay fell upon everyone. Bao Si was amused to see the soldiers mortified and gave a cold smile. The king was very delighted and awarded a thousand pieces of gold to the minister who put forward the ideas. Later, the joke was repeated several times when a real danger threatened the king. He had the beacon fire lit again, but the ducal states thought the king was playing the same trick again to please his concubine. No one to, uh, came to his rescue. Therefore, the Western Zhou dynasty was overthrown, and the king was killed. Hence, the famous saying, a single smile costs a thousand pieces of gold, and the sovereign rulers are fooled by the beacon fire. It's a Chinese version, crying wolf. Xi'an in the Qin Dynasty. This place used to be the site of Xianyang City, one part of present Xi'an. Mm. More than 2,000 years back, it was the capital of the Qin Dynasty, the first centralized autocratic feudal empire in Chinese history. This was a capital built by the first Qing emperor. It witnessed the construction of many magnificent palaces. It was ruined by wars towards the end of the third century BC. 
The word China is an English transliteration of the Chinese character Qin Chun. The first Qin Emperor came into power at the age of 13. As soon as he became the king, he gave order to, to have his huge tomb built. He conquered the other six rival kingdoms in 10 years' time and established the first multinational autocratic and centralized feudal empire in Chinese history in 221 BC. He proclaimed himself the first emperor of China. He gave order to connect the wars of different states. Then the Great War came into being. The Terracotta Warriors and Horses It is one of the eight wonders of the world. Built 2,300 years ago, it took 720,000 people 38 years to finish the Emperor's Mausoleum. It was discovered in 1974, opened to public five years later. They are one of the satellite pits with funeral possession instead of the tomb where the first Qing Emperor was buried. Terracotta Warrior Museum, located east of the Emperor's Mausoleum, inside the most uh, museum, you will see three pits of warriors. Pit number one, number two, number three. Uh, and number one, the biggest one, the number three is believed to be the headquarters of the three pits. Three pits of 8,000 pieces life-sized soldiers protecting the first Qing Empress tomb will be unearthed here, there. Two hundred, uh, two thousand three hundred years ago, all the pottery figures were painted and arranged in battle formation. All of them had a weapon, a real weapon in their hands. Two thousand three hundred years later, all the colors gone, and the figures were broken into small pieces. The archaeologists put the pieces together to restore the figures. Standing General, Ninning Archer, General. All the figures have different faces and expressions. They are believed to be the copy of the real soldiers of the Qin Dynasty. Inside the museum, you can also visit two bronze chariots and horses. They are half-sized bronze chariots and horses. They were made for the emperor's soul to go traveling by. Chariot number one. The driver is the bodyguard for the chariot number two. So chariot number two is for the emperor's soul to sit and sleep inside. They are the crown of bronze work. The first Qin Emperor's Mausoleum, located at the foot of Lishan Mountain in the east of Xi'an. It was originally 120 meters tall, but has reduced to 46 meters due to more than 2,000 years of erosion by wind and rain plus human destruction. Today they look like a natural hill, but they are not. It hasn't been excavated. According to history record, inside the mausoleum, Fine utensils, precious stones, and other rarities were everywhere. Automatic crossbones were fixed to protect the tomb from robbery. The mercury lakes and waterways were built to represent the Yellow River and 
the Yangtze River, and even the vast ocean. The ceiling was decorated with pearls and gems to symbolize the celestial body, including the sun and the moon. The, the fall of the Qin Dynasty Abuse labor for building the Great Wall, the mausoleum, the magnificent palaces, etc., resulted in people's rights against the Qin's tyranny, and the Qin dynasty was overthrown. Xi'an was called Chang'an in Han Dynasty. The connotation of Chang'an is permanent peace. It was the first international metropolis in Chinese history. It was twice the size of Rome in the West. The first emperor of the Western Han Dynasty, Liu Bang, was persuaded by one of his high officials to choose Xi'an as the capital for the following reasons. First one, Xi'an is situated in the middle of central Shanxi plain, which is good for farming, can provide enough food for its people. The plain is intersected by the Yellow River on the east side and surrounded by hills and mountains on three other sides. All this provided a natural defense for Xi'an and made the city strategically important. The Han Dynasty constitutes a very important episode in Chinese history. It was one of the most powerful empires in the world, exerting a far-reaching influence on the development of the succeeding dynasties in Chinese history. This is why Han is often referred to as a synonym for the Chinese people and civilization in the world today. The Silk Road started in the Western Han Dynasty. His name is Zhang Qian. He was dispatched by Emperor Wu Di to go to the Western regions. During the reign of Emperor Han Wu Di, the Silk Road, which ran across the Asia continent, was formally opened. It started from Xi'an. Uh, all the way to the west. It enabled Chinese silk to be exported to various countries in the western regions. In return, horses of fine breeds, plants, music, and dance were introduced into China. This plump and sturdy horse is a typical fine breed brought back to China through the Silk Road. Seeking horses of fine breeds was one of the important motives for the Han Dynasty to open the Silk Road. At that time, Chang'an became the largest center uh, of international exchange in Asia. Uh, what do you think about these hills? They are not natural hills. They are emperor's mausoleums of Western Han Dynasty. They were all piled up with rammed earth, taking the shape of frostum. In the second century BC, Liu Bang, the first emperor of the Western Han Dynasty, chose this Tibetland area as the site of the imperial cemetery. Nine out of 11 emperors of the Western Han Dynasty were buried here, together with hundreds of imperial kinsmen, ministers, and generals. This area marks a large underground treasure house of historic uh, artifacts. Among the 11 mausoleums, the two famous ones are Yangling Mausoleum and Maoling Mausoleum. Yangling Mausoleum, it is a tomb area of Emperor Jing Di and his wife, Empress Wang. The two were buried separately in an area covering 
twenty square kilometers in the graveyard. It is the most intact royal mausoleum in the Han Dynasty to have been found to date. The emperor's tomb is surrounded by 81 burial pits and remnants of buildings. Mausoleum of Yangling uh, Museum of Yangling Mausoleum. Visitors can walk on the glass floor over the burial pits to see the artifacts underneath. In ancient China, people believed that all the burial objects in the tomb would serve the owners of the tombs as if they were alive. Maids provide service. Domestic animals provide labor and food. You can see the terracotta figures here are much smaller than those of the Qin Dynasty because in Han Dynasty, people know how to reduce labor work and the costs. Mao Ling for Emperor Wu Di. Uh, Emperor Wu Di was one of the most famous emperors in Chinese history. His great talent and bold strategy led the Han Empire to its prime. The feudal society of China made great developments in politics, economy, military affairs, and culture. China began to make a name for itself in the world as a highly civilized, wealthy, and powerful nation. Among all the tombs of the Western Han Dynasty, Mao Ling Mausoleum was the largest, took the longest time to be built and had the richest funeral objects, 53 years to build. According to historic records, one third of the yearly taxes went into the construction of the mausoleum and the purchase of the funeral objects. So after the Eastern Han Dynasty, Maolin Mausoleum became the target of grave diggers. Huo Qi Bing's tomb. There are over 20 satellite tombs of high officials and noble relatives around the Maolin Mausoleum. The famous young general Huo Qi Bing on six occasions fought the Hong invaders bravely, was buried on the eastern side of the mausoleum one kilometer away. The 16 giant stone carvings that were originally placed in front of the Huo Qi Bing's tomb are now very famous. They are galloping horse, crouching horse, a tiger lying in wait, crouching elephant, and so on. The hung under horse hoofs is the most famous one. The green part is the city of Tang, Tang's Chang'an city. It was built on the basis of Sui Daxing city with further improvement and expansion. It is a magnificent and well-planned city. This is a plain figure of the Tang Chang'an city. It included three areas the palace city, the imperial city, and the outer city. The city was divided into 108 rectangular compounds as fun. This layout of Chang'an has, has had far-reaching influence on later dynasties and has served as a model for capital cities in some other Asian countries, such as Japan and Korea. It covers an area of 84.1 square kilometers, seven times the size of capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, and nine times the size of the main capital of the same name. The Tang Dynasty was China's feudal society at the height of their power and splendor. 
It also marked the golden era in the history of Shanxi. Chinese overseas today still regard themselves as the descendants of the Tang, and the place where they live as the streets of the Tang, Chinatown. This, to some extent, reflects the enormous impact the Tang Dynasty has had on its descendants. Eighteen Muslims of the Tang Dynasty emperors on Guanzhong Plain. Among them, Qianling Muslim is the most famous one. Tang Dynasty Qianling Muslim is the joint tomb of Tang Dynasty Emperor Gao Zong and his Empress Wu Zetian. Wu Zetian was the only empress in Chinese history. On both sides of the sacred wall in front of the tomb, 124 acquisite and lovely stone statues are lined up from north to south. They include winged horses, stone horses, garden generals, and stone lions, etc. There are also 61 stone statues representing the heads of ethnic minority groups and the envoys from friendly countries who came to attend Emperor Gaozong's funeral. Emperor Gaozong the third emperor of the Tang Dynasty. He had no political ability. He could hardly make any final decisions on court affairs without the, the prime minister's assistance. His power gradually fell into his empress, Wu Zetian's hands, because of his inability and cowardice. Wu Zetian was one of Emperor Taizong's concubines at age of 14. She was smart and read eagerly. She lived in the imperial palace for a long period of time, accumulating a wealth of political experience. After Li Zhi became the emperor, she became one of Li Zhi's concubines and then the empress the following year. After became the empress, she gradually gained the power to handle all the important state affairs. Through 30 years of struggle, she finally became the only empress in Chinese history. She displayed outstanding personal ability during the 50 years of her reign. At that time, the society was stable the national defense was strengthened, and the economy was highly developed. Now let's come to the Tang Dynasty Big Red Goose Pagoda area. Here we need to know the Thanksgiving Temple, Big Red Goose Pagoda, Xuanzang. This is the neighborhood of Big Red Goose Pagoda. Thanksgiving Temple. It was first built in Sui Dynasty, when Emperor Gaozong was still a empress, uh, was still a prince. Her mother died. His mother died at a very young age, and he wanted to show his gratefulness to his mother. He had this temple rebuilt and uh, changed its name into Thanksgiving Temple. Inside the temple, uh, you will see the famous Big Red Goose Pagoda. It is more than 60 meters high. It is the oldest building in the downtown area of Xi'an. Xuanzang, his name is, is Xuanzang. He was both a great translator and a traveler at age 28. He went to study Buddhism in India. He uh, spent 17 years doing research into Buddhism in various places. Later, uh, in spite of many hardships, 
he came back to Chang'an with more than 600 volumes of Buddhist scriptures. His travel in the Western region was based on what he had witnessed in about 128 countries and regions. His work provides an important source of information for the study of the history and the geography of these regions. He was invited by the Tang Emperor to be the leader of the Thanksgiving Temple. He, sp so he stayed the, uh, in the temple for 12 years and translated more than 1,000 volumes of Buddhist scriptures. He also had the famous Big White Goose Pagoda built to store all the Buddhist scriptures he had brought back from India. To the south of the Thanksgiving Temple stands a modern bronze statue of Xuanzang. Uh, in the Big Wild Goose Pagoda area, we shouldn't miss two places, modern places. The first one, Modern Fountain Show Square. And second, the modern Great Tang Everbright Street. These two places are the uh, very are the are very popular nowadays in China. The great mosques in of the Tang Dynasty. It was built in 742 AD. It is the biggest of its kind in Xi'an and also one of the oldest and best preserved mosques in China. It is a major spot for the religious activities of over 60,000 Muslims in Xi'an. Unlike Arabian mosques with splendid domes, skyward minarets and dazzling patterns, it assumes the striking features of Chinese pavilions with painted beams and engraved ridge poles. Near the uh, Great Mosque is a famous Muslim street. Here, people can try all kinds of Muslim snacks. The Tang Paradise the present Tang Paradise is the first theme park in China to have been built in the style of Tang Royal Garden in 200, uh, 2005. It was a huge, fancy and popular garden in Xi'an. City of Xi'an in the Ming Dynasty After Tang Dynasty, Xi'an lost its position as a national capital, but it remained a place of strategic importance for the feudal dynasties to maintain control of the northwest and southwest of the country. On the other hand, it was still the military, political, economic, and cultural center in the northwestern China. So, the city of Xi'an in Ming Dynasty. The Ming Dynasty city wall. The moat, the city wall. It is the best preserved ancient city wall of China. More than 600 years old. It is rectangle. 13.7 kilometers long surrounds the ancient city, 12 meters high, surrounded by a moat. People can take a walk on bicycle on the flat top. There's an international marathon on the top each winter now. South Gate, the moat. Flat top. B 
beautiful scenery in the evening. We can bicycle on the top. The International in Winter Marathon. They, they not only win the medal, but also some prize. The bell tower of the Ming Dynasty. It is a landmark of Xi'an. It is the biggest and best preserved ancient bell tower in China. There is a huge ancient bell inside. It is located in the center of Xi'an. It was built in 1384 in the Ming Dynasty. 36 meters high. It was used to tell people time in the morning in old days. A conclusion. CM prides itself on its history, but never falls behind in modern aspects. It is really a new modern city. Xi'an's citizens are thought to be too attached to their homeland, perhaps, perhaps because the city has been selected as one of China's top 10 livable cities and top 10 happiest cities for consecutive years. So welcome to study in Xi'an. Thank you.